where do you see the, the biggest opportunity for Softcat in 2023? Where, where do you see the market going? I don't think there's one answer to that. Mm. It's, and that's, again, it's the beauty of our business. We've got such a broad offering now. We've got such a broad, 10,000 customers in the UK selling all types of infrastructure to them. So we, we don't have to try and guess or know where that opportunity is because our account managers and salespeople are, are finding it out on a day-to-day -day basis with, the, with all of their customers. And again, our job is to then just to respond to that. So, yeah, we don't have to sort of place bets or, or try and work it out in advance. I mean, the hot topics will always be this cloud computing and how we help people move workloads to the public cloud or how we secure that um, end user compute environments are shifting because of hybrid working. So there's a load of hot topics and we, we have to have capabilities across those. But different customers are doing different things at different times, and so you've got to be you've got to be pretty agile with it as well. How worried about are you or Softcat about the the current headwinds in the economy? Because I mentioned to you over lunch that whilst the tech community is doing pretty well, partners, distributors, I, I feel are doing pretty well. There's a lot of end users that are really really struggling, and you mentioned um, again over lunch around your salespeople empathizing with customers and, and how they actually articulate that message. How, how are you actually navigating that market with your with some of your customers really going through challenges? Yeah, it's it's an important one to, to get the right tone here because within Softcat, we're very confident about the future of our industry and the future of the company. And that's that's great. And it's good that our people know that. But as you say, there's an awful lot of upheaval in the world. It's difficult for a lot of companies out there society's gone through a heck of a shift with the pandemic and now we've got an inflationary environment that nobody's seen for 15 years or whatever it is and we've got interest rate so for a lot of businesses it's tough times mm. so trying to get our people to understand that for softcat and our industry we think this is a great opportunity to keep hiring to keep expanding keep listening to customers and moving the, the proposition in the direction that they need us to go but a lot of our salespeople's customers will be feeling it very differently. They won't have that confidence. They'll be in a different reality. So trying to balance that confidence that we have with empathy for customers in a different situation. It's something I spend a lot of time. We have a management meeting once a month where we get 200 people in Softcat, about 10% of the organization on a call, and we just talk about how we're seeing things and trying to communicate that and to build their empathy for customers in different situations something we spend quite a lot of time on um but yeah it's it's difficult and it is it is tough times for people but not i think for our industry or for softcat it's a we're planning this year we'll keep building the the, the, the team by probably 15 percent or more in terms of expansion of our own our own business um so we're we're pretty confident and it's a great time to hire people as well for us talking to hiring we've obviously been well documented about the the tech layoff and the, the big companies um, do you see that as a, a good opportunity for Softcat or do you see it as, or are you still going to look at sort of embracing that young talent that are coming in and nurturing young talent and, and developing it through the business? Um, so both. It's, mm. I mean, it's, yeah, we've always said that when everybody else is battening down the hatches and, and not recruiting or laying people off, it's a brilliant time to go out and get some fantastic talent into the business. So we're definitely doing that. I mean, this, this year to grow, to grow our headcount by 15 to 20%, which is what we're looking to do, we'll hire about 700 people. So there's, we, we've got maybe 250 people as coming in as graduates or maybe second jobbers, but make about 90% of that is graduates and apprentices coming into the sales team. And we'll continue with that for sure. That's a, that's a and you know, again, even, even at that level, the recruitment environment's easier because people like Microsoft or whoever maybe not hiring. So there's, a, an availability of talent that we'll definitely take advantage of at the graduate level, but at the more serious level, se senior level as well. So we always need technologists. We need people who've got different experiences. So yeah, across all angles, we see it as a good opportunity to find, find the right people. Now we mentioned over lunch again about hybrid work and I've almost talked to it to death about on this show about hybrid working last year, about offices, and about getting people back into offices. I'm seeing in the market now that it's almost this now. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the office, Monday and Friday at home, and, and that's almost going to be for the foreseeable and hybrid working. What, what's your view on that? And also, what do you think the soft cats view will be moving forward? So our policy is that people, 
can make their own decisions and choose when and where they work, but we'd like them to have a bias towards the office because we know that people working together, physically being together, is really important for building community, building a culture, and, and, and especially for the young kids coming into the business from learning from other people who've been there and done it as well. So we want people to be in the office working together, but we want them to have freedom of choice to do what's right for them and for the company and make, make decisions around that. That's Everything for me about Softgut that makes it great is that we do what's right for the collective good. And you can't force people into that. You have to appeal to them to think about it in that way, role model the right behaviours, and then hopefully you, you find the right balance because there is a best of both worlds here. People, you know, being in the office five days a week caused a lot of problems for people, whether it's childcare or, or whatever it is. So having flexibility is great, but we need them to do what's right for them and the company and balance and make good judgments. So that's, that's what we're trying to get to. And then you end up with, it's a different answer for everybody and that's okay. So mm. we are in a situation where, yeah, I reckon we've probably got 20% of the people in, maybe 25 on a Monday and Friday probably between 70 and 90 during the week, depending on what's going on in each office. And that is working really, really well for us. I think the pendulum's still moving and it hasn't, you know, the equilibrium's not fully established yet. But that's our approach and that's how it's playing out and it feels pretty pretty healthy to us. It's working well. And my last question for you, Graham. You've, I've listened to your story in your career today and I'm thinking there's got to be one lesson you've learned there that you think, do you know what? This is the biggest lesson I've learned in my, my career because you've taken on a, a role now, at a public listed company, very well known in the industry. What's the one biggest lesson you've learned in your career that you think, do you know what, if I give that to the listeners, that's what I would do? Um, uh, I don't know. Probably something along the lines of, because business and human systems are so complicated, and, and I'm quite a, I kind of see the world in black and white and, and think I know, and I like to know how things work and what the answer is. But if you try and do that on your own, you are, if you try and come up with the answer to something on your own, you are most often wrong. And I've kind of learned that probably in the hard way during my career that thinking I know the answer and right, here's what we're going to do and let's get on with it. And then finding out, mm, yeah, I should have talked to them or that was a perspective I was missing, mm. that if only I'd, I'd had, we would have done it differently. So you've got to be clear and decisive, but you have to wait until you're fully informed to try and get there and talking to people with different views and different ways of seeing things. I always find it interesting. We do internally, we do this for senior leaders. We do this sort of finance for senior leaders course, which I kind of run myself and some other people do. And often people who aren't from a finance background come to that thinking that there'll always be a spreadsheet that you can create that'll tell you the answer. And they find it really surprising that I say to them, as the finance person, you'll never get the answer from a spreadsheet. It's kind of one input. And the point is that the world's too complicated to put into a spreadsheet. And it's helpful to put numbers around stuff, but it's, it's the thoughts that are in people's heads and bringing that together that will find you the right way forward. So taking the time to think about things, talk to people, gather different perspectives, be open-minded and be absolutely honest with yourself about when you've got stuff wrong. That's, those are probably the hardest lessons I've learned and, and what I think about pretty much every day. Graham, you've been a great guest. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks for having me. Yeah.